Now, we have been talking um, about the difference between sonship versus a servant. Sonship versus a servant. And our supported scripture uh, uh, is coming from, uh, has come from Galatians, uh, the fourth chapter. And if we can just put that up, and we're just going to kind of peruse to it just to give you a, a brief recap so that we can go into the rest of the message. Amen. Um, Galatians, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse one. And this, um, and this is in the King James Version. And notice what it says. It says, now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, differ nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. And how many know uh, he's, he was referring to Christ Jesus? Amen, as the heir. Amen. And but he says, but uh, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were under were in bondage under the elements of the world. Uh, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Wow, isn't that powerful? And because ye are you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a what? But a son, and if a son, then a what? Of God through Christ. And so this is our support of scripture, and this is how we came uh, with the theme or the text or thought of the difference between sonship versus a servant. And this is so important, and we need to understand this. And as I was just uh, meditating on this all through the week and again this morning, and, um, uh, and we have established with you that it says uh, that an heir, talking about Christ, as long as he is a child, differ nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. And even though we have been born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, and we're joint heirs to the kingdom of God, as long as we're acting like a child, amen, thinking like a child, then we are, are not giving the responsibility, amen, to declare and decree in this earth realm. Because a child is immature, isn't that right? But after we have become up from the tutors and governors until the time appointed, God always, watch this, God always used people to represent him. God, just like God used Moses, amen, to, uh, to set um, 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 Joshua. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, dear. Uh, just like he um, uh, used Joshua, uh, God used Moses to, to, to put honor on Joshua before the people because God knew and God communicated with Moses that Joshua was ready. Isn't that right? So Joshua was up on the tutors and governors until a time appointed. Now, I want to establish with you uh, in this little recap before we get into the messages that even though some of us may have been saved a long time, and those of you that are watching through by the way of the Internet, if you've been saved a long time and things are not moving, things are not happening, and you keep experiencing the same cycles, patterns, and behaviors, glory be to God, it could be possibly, possibly it could be that you are not mature enough, amen, to go to the next level. Have you ever witnessed um, uh, people um, uh, 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 who wasn't conditioned with a lot of money? And when they do receive money, uh, they might be rich today and possibly broke tomorrow or in a year's time they broke. Why? Because they have not, they have not uh, developed that, that wealth mentality. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, um, and, uh, and this is why just as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit, now, I have a covenant brother who's a multimillionaire, and, and, and he's privy to some things that he can't even share with the average person. But one thing he did share with me was this, is that um, when people become multimillionaires, there are workshops or there are personal people that would come to your home and teach you how you should carry yourself, uh, how you should uh, uh, guard yourself, engage yourself, and protect your family. In other words, because you have a lot of money, you don't let people know it. Because you don't know who's out to try to destroy you. 
and especially nowadays, it has heaped up. I mean, people are walking around with oozes, gun, knives, stingers, or whatever the case may be. And and and, and watch this. And they are trying to they're trying to rob you. And when they try to rob you, how many know that's part of the broken system? Yeah. Jesus said that the enemy come to steal, kill, and to the what? Destroy. And so so and 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 uh, and so. Uh, so they take them through this time of, uh, of, uh, of uh, 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 schooling so that they can develop that mindset, that mindset. We was talking uh, with a young lady, one of the waitresses uh, who always uh, wants to wait on us at this particular restaurant. And I said, uh, I mentioned something about the original uh, owner. She said, well, uh, he don't have anything. I said, why you say this? Well, see, he's riding around in a, in a raggedy car. Well, that's good. She said, he don't have any money. See, I know he have money. I know he's a multi, multi-millionaire, but he don't, he's not bragging it. Sometimes when people get wealth, they want to wear it. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're going to do that, you need to gradually get into it. Not just, man, you was in poverty for the last 10, 15 years, and then overnight now, you let everybody know. You don't know who's watching you. You just never know. I mean, I just got stuck right there. I'm sorry. But anyway, so, so Jesus was up on the uh, tutors and governors until a time appointed. And then the things that belongs to him, now God was able to place it in his hand and he began to operate in authority. Isn't that right? Praise the Lord. And I like what he said here. And um, he says, um, the third verse says, even so we. Look at your neighbor and say, that's you and I. Even so, we, when we were children, the immature thinking, were in a bondage up under the elements of the world. And how many know that this world functioned off a fallen or broken system that's already been established weeks ago, right? It's a corrupt system. We was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Glory be to God. And so... Uh, but once we become born again, this is why we share all the time. Once you become born again, it's very important for us to be discipled, to get that foundation. Amen. To know why Jesus came, to know why Jesus saved you, to know what is the promise that he has given us through by the Father. We need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to be word-based. Come on now. We have to develop a God consciousness in this earth realm. Why? Because our just being saved alone, glory be to God, you're going to be challenged by the wiles of the world. And there's always a pull to the flesh. I don't care who you are. There's always a pull, always a pull. The enemy looked at Jesus and saw the opportunity. Jesus hadn't eaten in uh, 40 days. And watch this. And the word of God said, after the 40 days, then he's going to try to come and tempt him. But Jesus was so full of the word. Isn't that right? And he said, 40 is written. 40 is written. 40 is written. 40 is written. Glory be to God. And that's what we have to. We have to develop that God consciousness. Amen. So that we'll be able to say, 40 is written. Praise the Lord. And not always to the enemy, but sometimes we've got to speak it to ourselves. Hallelujah. We have to speak it to ourselves. We have to convince ourselves that we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We function by a different set of rules. We function by the government of the kingdom of God. I say all the time, just like a fish need water, amen, that's how much more we need the kingdom of God. Amen. Without the kingdom of God supplying us, we will die. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. We cannot survive in this corrupt world without the presence of the Lord, without being filled with the Holy Ghost. With, uh, amen. We need the Holy Spirit. And, and can't you see, it is so important for us to have the Holy Spirit amen. to aid and assist us. It is so important for us to have the Holy Spirit. Yes. Praise the Lord, because without the Holy Spirit, we will fall back into that fallen system. We, we, we will be ensnared, amen, into that corrupt system. Hallelujah. But with the Holy Spirit, glory be to God, I don't care where you at, the Holy Spirit, he will navigate us every step of the way. Why? Because he's there to lead and guide us. Isn't that right? Amen. Hallelujah. That, I mean, that excites me. It, it excites me alone. I just got stuck right there, didn't I? So, but I just want to share that because, because we're up under the elements of this world, and the only way to break the matrix, the only way to come out of that maze, we must be born again. Once we're born again, then the scales fall from our eyes. Isn't that right? 
Amen. God began now to deal with our heart. Glory be to God. And we can see clearly now, amen, since our eyes has been opened. Hallelujah. Because we have been reborn again by the redemption blood of Jesus Christ. And so, uh, so we understand uh, that all of us must go through uh, that time of being tutored and, and governed, amen, uh, so that we uh, can uh, be appointed by leadership that the Father had moved upon their heart. There is a such thing of endorsement. Jesus was endorsed by his Father. Amen. Amen. Uh, after Jesus was born by, uh, not born, but after Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, what happened? God began to speak and say, this is my beloved son of whom I'm what? Yeah. That's endorsement right there. Somebody say, that's endorsement. Yeah. Amen. It's nothing like being endorsed by a mature leader. It's nothing like being endorsed by your parents or your caretakers. Glory be to God. Do you hear me what I'm saying? So endorsement is very important. There's a lot of people, they went and they wasn't sent. A lot of people went because they had an ability. They can eBay, eBay.com, and time by time speak in tongues, and they can prophesy. But, the, but and, and, and a lot of them, their character wasn't developed. And when their character is not developed, they're basically going on their gifts. Yeah. Hallelujah. And people are drawn to the gift, but if you don't have character, you don't have foundation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you hear me what I'm saying? So this is very, very important for us to notice, amen, and to receive this. Now, uh, 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 the last uh, section of our recap is this. Uh, we share with you uh, in the book of Genesis, uh, uh, chapter 1, uh, 26 through 28. We're not going to read it, but it talks about how God had created Adam and, uh, Adam and Eve. He created them in his image and after their likeness. And the word of God said he gave them dominion which means ownership. He gave them authority to rule and reign, amen, over the earth. Isn't that right? Amen. Praise the Lord. And But because, and we know the, dispen the first dispensation was the dispensation of innocence. And the enemy took advantage of their innocence, and they gave up their ownership that God had given them for a, bro for a broken system. Come on now. It's safe to say, and it is written, that the first Adam had failed. Why? Because he gave up his ownership. Amen. For a fallen system, yeah. which is the devil, uh, uh, Lucifer or Satan, praise God. And so uh, and we have established with you uh, in the recap session on Wednesday night that uh, in the book of Luke, the third chapter, and we're not going to read it. And the 38th verse, it says that how God had called Adam a son. Praise God. So Adam was one of God's son. Glory be to God. And uh and uh, we also share with you uh, uh, from that standpoint of view in terms of Adam and Eve, we also find the same principle in the book of Luke, the 15th chapter, and starting at the 15th verse through the 32nd, and we're not going to read it, but we talked about the particle son. Amen. The particle son, glory be to God, he was born in royalty. Come on now. It's obvious that his daddy was rich and had a lot of authority. He had favor with God, and the son was born right into it. He was part of the sonship. But for some reason, he gave up his ownership because he wanted his portion, and the word of God said, and he wasted it on right of living. You know the scripture, right? The rest of you who don't, read the Bible. Amen. Or catch the movie on it. Praise the Lord. And you will see where he gave up his rightful ownership for right of living. But the good thing is this. Uh, 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 his father never chased him, but his father was in a position that when he that when he saw his son coming back after his son came to himself, isn't that something? I want to say this say this to all the, uh, all the parents. You know, don't let those children run you crazy. Amen. 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 When they're small, they walk on you. I mean, they they, they walk on your feet. You're walking with them, and when they get grown, if you're not careful, they'll walk on your heart. Yeah. Amen. They have to find their way just like you had to find your way. Yeah. Do I need to say that again? Yeah. So, yeah, amen. So you have to let them go, and this is what the particle son did. He let them, he let his son go, and I'm quite sure it pulled on his heart. Why? Because this man came out of his loins. Come on now. Yeah. Amen. Kingship was on his son. Sonship was there. Right. Amen. But, but he let him go. Irregardless of what his status was, he let him go. 
But he came to himself, and we found out that after that, his father had restored him after he had repented. So I'm no longer a man to be worthy to be called a son, but accept me as one of your servants. How can I accept my son as a servant? Glory be to God when he wasn't born a servant. Right. Ah! Glory be to God. Right. Hallelujah. So his father restored it. And we talked about the other brother. And glory be to God. And the other brother, he got upset. And I'm quite sure that some people, you have served the Lord for a long time. You served the Lord and, 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 and seem like you have gotten to this level. But you just can't bust through that glass roof. Seem like you can't go any higher. And here comes somebody who you know have backslid. Amen. Pastor had restored them or some other church had restored your friend. And now you begin to see them climb and go, go, go. And now you might be confident attitude. And so the, and so the, uh, uh, el, uh, uh, the older son or the elderly son, glory be to God, uh, praise the Lord. My wife said it's the older son. I say elderly son. Amen. That, that, that's our debate. Anyway, but nevertheless is this. <laughs> nevertheless is this. Uh, is, that, is that the mere fact, the mere fact. Uh, when he had conversation with his father, said, you have never did none of these things for me. You never had given me uh, 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 a calf or whatever the case may be so, the, so I can have a party with my friends. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, and so, 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 so the son was upset, and his father began to reply and began to respond to him, say, look, you've been with me all the time. All is mine is yours. So those of you who might be whining and complaining, things may not be happening the way that maybe you wanted to happen because you've been functioning up under the mindset of, of a servant rather than a son. Oh, I know I'm talking good up here. Oh, I know because I've been there. I'm wondering why God is, God, why are you not moving? Why are you not moving because my mindset had to change? Amen. I like the way uh, Dr. Sandra and I, we was dialoguing, and she said, you know, uh, 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 that elderly son, he had that, um, uh, the spirit of in what? Entitlement. He had an entitlement upon him. And, and how many times we have witnessed it inside the body of Christ, watch this, that spirit of entitlement is part of that fallen or that broken or that corrupt system. Entitlement. Oh, be, because you, my son, you think you're entitled. Because you, you, this, you think you're entitled. No, 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 no. You don't have to, look, you don't have to function in that mindset. Amen. Walk, walk in the royalty what, in terms of what you've been born into. Amen. If you don't know, sometimes it's good to just keep your mouth shut and just watch. Remember when I shared with you uh, my covenant brother in Bermuda, uh, he's 100% Portuguese, and I have never experienced and never had a seven-course meal. I didn't know it was a seven-course meal. Praise God. Give me some chicken wings or give me some lima beans and some rice or some rice and some collard greens. I mean, I knew that type of stuff in cornbread, but a seven-course meal, I, uh, so I didn't know what to do, but you know what? I knew this. I knew to keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Have you ever just witnessed people, they inside, uh, in other words, they have been introduced into a real nice atmosphere, but they don't know what to do? Then they start getting all loud and stuff. <laughs> uh, waiter, uh, could you move me over there in the other wing, please? <laughs> they don't know how to act. Glory be to God. Why? Because they have not been developed. It's a lack of exposure. Somebody say lack of exposure. Oh, I'm talking real good right now. A lack of exposure. But mother had enough sense to keep my mouth shut. And so all of these little forks on the table, all of these little spoons, and a butter knife, and, and, and I, 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 look, I, one fork, I hate. That's a done deal with me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, and all of these different glasses and so forth and so on. You know, and so and, I'm, he, and, and he's very discerning. He said, just watch me. Sometimes you just need to watch. Yeah. I don't know how many times people have asked us, Pastor, uh, we want you and Dr. Sandra uh, to mentor us. And, and God knows we cannot spend eight hours with you a day. But all you have to do is just watch. If you, if you can just catch one thing, it's connected to the other dots. It transcends us into other areas. Going through that time of development, amen? I got stuck again. So here we go. So, uh, so therefore, 
uh, uh, it is established. We have established, and you know I love um, uh, this, this Psalms 115, the vision of Psalms in the 16th verse, and it says, uh, the heaven, even the heavens are, are the Lord's, but the earth have he given to the children of men. So therefore, he had given it to us. Come on now. And we have to take that rightful place. We have to take dominion. We have to rule and reign. And we have to, uh, we have, to have that ownership. If we're, if we're joining us to the kingdom of God, come on now, we have ownership. Isn't that right? It's already been established years ago that we are the recipients and the, and the beneficiaries to everything that Christ has suffered, bled, died, and risen. Isn't that right? So look at your neighbor and say, don't give up your ownership. Oh, yeah, I know sometimes you want to cut somebody out, but don't give up your ownership. I know sometimes you're trying to prove to them, glory be to God, that you have a voice too. But come on, don't give up your ownership. Amen. If you're a king priest, this is the wrong time, amen, to start acting ugly. Pastor, Pastor Catherine preached a message year, years and years ago, amen, uh, 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 something like this, it's the wrong day to be drunk. Amen. We got to be mature. Amen. I'm not telling you to lay down and become a, a doormat. Come on now. Jesus didn't do that. He said, for it is written. Come on now. Ain't come at you something else. Glory be to God. For it is written. So we have to be mature. Look, it got to go beyond the jiggling, the jerking, and the falling out. Amen. It got to go beyond the speaking in the tongues, praise the Lord. Amen. This is, a, this is a developed mindset of the kingdom of God. Didn't God say it? And he spoke through the prophet. He said, my ways are not your ways, neither my thoughts, your thoughts, said the Lord. Amen. And, and you always hear me say, I had a problem with that. Okay, I'm born again. How come my ways are not God's ways? It's because, you know, sometimes we, we try to have the appearance that we're all of that. But it's not an appearance. Amen. It's in the manifestation. Or it's in the fruit. Somebody say it's in the fruit. Amen. You don't have to judge the tree if you see the fruit. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you're more than leaves on the tree. You're the tree. Amen. You're bearing fruit. Amen. And we have established some while back, glory be to God, that the leaves is for the tree. Amen. Praise the Lord. But the fruit is for the people. Yes. If you, hey, glory be to God. You want somebody to follow you to Jesus, you got to bear some fruit. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You got to, amen, bear fruit. You, uh, the fruit is the light of God. Yes. Isn't that right? And, 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 and watch this. He said that we're the light and we're the salt of the earth. So glory be to God. You got to be real salty. Praise God. Look at somebody say, stay thirsty, my friends. <laughs> salt would make people thirsty. <laughs> you like that, will you? Salt would make people thirsty. And they will come running to Emmanuel's well. They will come running to the well of God. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, didn't Jesus say, blessed are those who thirst and hunger after righteousness? Stay thirsty, my friends. Praise the Lord. Uh, so, and then we came down to the point, well, this, this proven that, that, uh, that God had given us to rule and reign in this earth realm. There's God's way, and there is uh, 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 the enemy's way. The enemy's way is full of corruption. We talked about um, uh, organized crime. Isn't that something? It's crime, but it's organized, praise the Lord. Amen. And, 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 uh, and, uh, and, and, and I have talked with people, and some people thought that, uh, thought that the enemy or the devil, uh, Lucifer, uh, glory be to God, was omnipresent. I said, no, he, he, he's not omnipresent. He just organized. You know, back in the day, back in the day, and it's in my bloodline, and probably a lot of you all too, uh, uh, when, you know, the First Nation people, and uh, when they was being attacked uh, on their ground, and, and so when the intruder came, or the terrorists came, or, or, or their pulls in force came, uh, they communicated by them. <laughs> well, we didn't know what they were, but they knew what it was. Boom, boom. They were sending forth signals. Amen. Why? Because they was organized. I'm trying to say something here. I, I'm, I'm trying to say something. So, 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 um, and we have already established too in the book of Hebrew, the first chapter and verse one, and we're not going to um, uh, read it, but it says, it says, well, actually verse two, uh, and this was the amplified, it says the person of the son whom he have 
appointed heir and lawful owner of all things. So Jesus is the lawful owner of all things. Why? Because he's the heir of God. And we are the heir according to uh, the word of God since we have been born again. Isn't that right? Praise, and praise the Lord. And we have also established, uh, is in the book of, uh, uh, is in the book of Ephesians, uh, that how Jesus Christ have reconciled all things back to himself. I preached a message, I don't know if it's here or up there in Pockstown, Pennsylvania, uh, uh, Jesus the repo man. Amen. He had repossessed everything that the devil thought he had. Amen. Isn't that something? Yeah, and, and watch it. And the enemy said, well, if you do this, I'll give you that. If you fall down, this will happen. Uh, if you do this and I give you all of them, how are you going to give me something? I, just, I come to take it back. Amen. So don't let the enemy swear you. You just tell him, look, I just come to take it back. Because it's already mine. I just come to, you just reminded me. You, you know. Watch this, devil. I almost forgot what I came here for, but you reminded me that I'm here to take it back. Hey! I'm taking back my children's, those who fell from grace. I'm taking back my kindred's, those who have fell from grace. I'm taking back the things that the enemy thought he had stole. I'm taking it back. Why? Be because of my ownership that God had given me through Christ Jesus. And if you don't take a stand, you will never know. Hallelujah. I know the old cliche. The old cliche is this. Well, you know, he may not come when you call him, but he's right on time. But I'm changing that. Look here. I'm saying, look here. I'm expecting God to show up early this week. Look at somebody say, I'm expecting God to show up early this week. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mother had brought, I want to testify a little bit. Mother had brought to my attention. I thought it was mentioned here, but she said it was on our prayer line. And, uh, and I saw uh, a car coming out of somebody's ear. Praise the Lord. I never saw that before. A amen. But watch this. But I saw the car coming out of the ear and praise the Lord. And I knew it was her. And watch this. Watch this. And uh, so it was three weeks later. We get a telephone call. Somebody wants to donate a vehicle. It was the same week, but it just took a while. See, see man, that, that, that's why, man, you have to let them wives talk. You understand? Yeah. What I'm you got you to gotta let them talk. Yeah, so she said it was the same week. We got a telephone call because it took a while because the title hadn't came in. That's right. And said, look, we have a car we want to donate to the church. Y'all don't hear me. But it was already prophesied. Amen. I was able to see through the eyes of God. And then my wife said the same week. Look, I'm, I'm expecting, look, y'all can say he may not come when you, when you call him, but he's right on time. No, I'm expecting him to show up early this week. Listen, listen. Devil, how are you going to offer me something when it's already mine? Jesus has reconciled all things to himself in heaven and in earth, the seen and the unseen. Hallelujah. Watch this, watch this, watch this. We did something real stupid right here. Uh, was it a Sunday before last or last something, Sunday or something like And had everybody, the Spirit of the Lord had ministered to my heart and say, have everybody uh, to sow seeds. 
get, get your nickels, your pennies, your dimes, your quarters, and 50 cents, dollars, whatever the case may be, and we're going to sow in one another's life. And, man, everybody, it, it, we were just sowing in everybody's life and one thing to the other. And watch this. Without you, t without you verbally testifying, how many have gotten a breakthrough less than seven days? Stand up to your feet right now. You've seen the manifestation. See there? Look, 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 look. Look, 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 look. W watch this. Watch this. Listen to me. L uh, listen to me. See? See? I'm not promoting that Jesus or God is a sugar daddy. He's not that. He's not that. And this is where we mess up at. When he bless us, we need to yet maintain that matureness and not act crazy, not act stupid. Amen? Man, I'm getting off the subject. I'm, 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 I'm getting off. I'm getting off the subject. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And see, and it's all for the benefit of his kingdom. Amen. So that we can evangelize. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. So it takes me to my first point. Embracing the process of sonship. Embracing the process of sonship. And I have a few scriptures here. Galatians, uh, the second chapter. And we're going to, oh, man, time is going by so fast. It's like I'm having to make a part two, a part three out of this, D. I'm going to see can I finish embracing the process of sonship. And then we're going to get out of the way. Watch this. Galatians, the second chapter, I need to pull this up in verse 20. I need you to go there real quick, and this is the King James Version. King James Version. Those of you that are watching through by the way of Internet, amen, listen to these scriptures and meditate on them. If you want a CD, glory be to God. If you will get in contact with us, we will mail a CD out to you, or you'll be able to watch it on YouTube. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you ready? Galatians 2.20. There it is right there. Let's read it together. Ready? Read. I am crucified. Nevertheless, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Not by grandmama. Not by the dream book. Not by a prophetic word that I get from over here and get from over there. But I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Isn't that something? Amen. So this is, this is the process or embracing the process of sonship. And Dr. Sandra had brought a message uh, when we have entered into the new Hebraic calendar year. Uh, well, prior to that, embracing the process. Amen? Uh, let's go to uh, 1 John 4.15. 1 John 4.15. Embracing the process of sonship. It's not enough just to be born again. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But we need to embrace the process so that we can walk in sonship. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. When you find it, say amen. We got it. Amen. I, I need you to read it with me. Read it. Read. Whosoever shall. This is what we need to do. And watch this. I don't want to uh, uh, preach at those who are saved, amen, but I want to preach to the, those who are thinking about backsliding, those who have been ensnared by the fallen system, those of you that are watching, glory be to God, and, and you are not established, and you have fallen out of fellowship with God. The Word of God says, in order for us to embrace the process of sonship, he said, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Somebody say, embrace the process of sonship. Embrace the process of sonship. Now let's go to the fifth chapter of the same book. First John, fifth chapter in verse 12. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I sense your presence, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I don't know about you. While they're finding this scripture, I'm crying out to God. I said, Lord, I want to see you. Amen. Lord, I want to behold your glory like never before. Amen. I want to experience a, a, a awe. A divine awe. Yeah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You ready? There it is on the board. Ready? Read. He that has the Son has 
So he that have the son has life, and that is the perfect system of God. Amen. But those who are out of fellowship with God, those who have not come to Christ, they have not life because they're part of the broken or the fallen system. The enemy had exalted his knowledge against God, and God had him kicked out. He was the only angel of his type that was created, and since then, God had not created another angel like him. Isn't that something? Amen. And we have already established that, that the fallen angel, Lucifer, was his kingdom name. God had put him in high places so that he can give him worship and praise. I mean, man, he was able to make sound. I mean, sounds came out of him. Amen. That God was able to delight in. Isn't that something? Yeah. Praise the Lord. But he lifted himself up in pride. Yeah. And when he did, God kicked him out. And praise the Lord. And watch this. And those who do not have the son which is Christ Jesus in them, they are functioning in a fallen and broken system that is full of corruption. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's go to uh, St. John 1, 12. I'm sorry. Yeah, St. John 1, 12. That's it. St. John 1, 12. Let's go there real quick. Glory be to God. Embracing the process. It's a process. Hallelujah. If, if it was left up to the intellect, man, a lot of us would, would miss it. Isn't that something? But it's not left up to the intellectuals. It's left up, amen, to the believers. Glory be to God. And God will use the intellect after you have been born again. Amen. There it is. It's on the board. Read it. Read. But as many as receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. As I prepare to close because I can't finish this. Uh, uh, Colossians. Colossians, uh, oh God, what, what chapter that was in? Uh, I forgot to write it down, but watch this. But it says in Colossians somewhere in there, uh, uh, it said, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of God. So since we have been born again, since we have embraced the sonship of God, we have been translated into the kingdom. And we have shared you many times the word of God tell us, thank you, sir. There it is right there. Uh, the word of God tell us for us to set our affections on things, what? Above. And that means setting, setting your affections, setting your, setting your mind, come on now, on, on the thoughts uh, in the kingdom, in the kingdom of God. Isn't that right? Because watch this, when we, when we set our affections on things above, then we have been elevated from all the turmoil down here. And remember, I have established, watch this. The traffic down here never stops. Right. Whatever, whatever you was in, it's still running this way. It's running uh, horizontally. Amen. Anger, rage, disbelief, rejection, all of that other, all of that stuff that's part of the, uh, uh, that which is part of the broken, fallen, and corrupt system, it's running horizontally. But when we, but when we set our affections above, Amen. come on here now. Man, we're functioning as a son. We're functioning as a king priest. And watch this. And when, we, and when we are elevated above those things that's taking place down here, now our, we have position or we poise ourselves vertically and we're able to see it from the kingdom perspective. When you're down here, you can't see it. You feel all the anguish. You feel all the bad emotions that come along with it. But when we have been elevated... When we set our affections on things above, now I'm able to see it from God's point of view. Hallelujah. And I'm able to declare and decree what heaven has sanctioned about the matter. We need to get this in our spirit. We need to get this in our spirit. We need to get it in our spirit. Get it in our spirit. Get it in our spirit. When you feel yourself getting, getting frustrated, yes, Jesus spoke with a loud voice. Hallelujah. But notice how he spoke with a loud voice. But prior to that, Jesus was functioning as the Son of God. Yes. He was functioning as the Son of God. He was full of the Word. He represented his Father. He was full of power and authority. Isn't that right? Amen. And he brought deliverance, amen, to the captives. He set the captives free. Yes. Amen. Those who was corrupt, those who was ensnared by a broken and fallen system, watch this. If the devil loved you that much, how come he's not feeding the poor? How come certain countries is still up under poverty? 
and missionaries, glory be to God, all over the world are going through, uh, going to uh, third world countries or whatever the case may be, and they're sending for resources to let them know that Jesus loved them. Yeah. They, are, they are just not preaching the word, but they're demonstrating by feeding them and they're clothing them and giving them all the necessary tools that it takes, amen, for, for a good living. It is so important, church. And watch what Jesus did. When Jesus came down, man, and after, after he went through the process and he was validated by his father, and Jesus went about ministry, man, and what did he do? He fed the multitude of 5,000. Come on now. How come the enemy didn't do it? Amen. Then he turned around and fed the multitude of 4,000. Come on now. Uh, blind eyes was open. Yes. Lane was able to walk. Dumb was able to talk. Yes. Come on now. I mean, the manifestation of the kingdom of God, no wonder Jesus said, for the kingdom of God has come nigh thee. Yes. Or the kingdom of God is at hand. Yes. Hallelujah. And when opportunity presented itself to you, man of God, and I say, man of God, you ought to tell the people for the kingdom of God is at hand. Silver and gold have I none, but that what I do have, I give unto you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm about to preach myself happy. Y'all going to make me praise the Lord up in here, up in here. The difference between sonship versus a servant. And look, we all are servants of God, but we're not up under bondage. Amen. A servant is up under bondage. Those who are part of this fallen, broken system, they are up under bondage. And there's a lot of fear. And remember the word of God. He reminded us, look, God said, I have not given you the spirit of fear. Come on now. I haven't, what, what are you fearing for? I have not given you the spirit of fear, but I've given you power, love, and a sound mind. I need you to function from that point of view. Yeah. Amen. You need to get it and you need to get it and get it with get it within your knower. Yeah. Hallelujah. That I have a sound mind about this matter. Yeah, I feel the pressure. Praise the Lord. Yes, I feel darkness around me, but it's not in me. Yeah. I feel the pressure on the outside, but it's not on the inside. Hallelujah. And you just keep watching me. Amen. Me and the Holy Ghost going to show you something. Hallelujah. Because I am a king priest. Hallelujah. Because I'm of the sonship of God. Amen. The authority and the ability is in me to recalibrate the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Amen. To shift the atmosphere. And I can walk in the God-given authority. I'm not going to give up my sonship. Amen. Because of what the enemy is trying to challenge me with. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get the Lord Jesus Christ a praise offering. Hallelujah.